Ladies and gentlemen, I have the honor of presenting the Consul General of France, Christophe Lemoyne. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here with you today. And uh, I'm very happy to be with, uh, with you all today in, uh, here in Irvine. It's my first visit to the museum. And I'm very happy that for that first visit, there's also a very special occasion, because tonight we're uh, honoring uh, you, Jean, and uh, and I think it's a it's a great occasion to recognize all your talents and all your merits. So, I, as the French tradition wants it, I prepared a a little speech just to uh, gather all your merits and your talents and all the great things that you you have done in your life. So, I'll do it in I'll do it in English, so I'll be understood by I think everybody. But uh, I know that uh, since you're a Francophile and a francophone on the top of it could have been done in French, but exceptionally it would be uh, it would be in English. And we're here to uh, honor your accomplishments as a uh, executive director of this museum, as well as an art historian. And uh, I know that as such you've played a leading role in the rediscovery um, of Californian. In Impressionism, and maybe that's your little French sign that gave you the hint <laughs> that maybe there was a something that is very well known in France was maybe also existing in California, and that you have fostered a broader understanding of the proximity of French and American cultures through Impressionism at, at first. So once again, let me thank you for being here tonight, and especially if you very special person that are that are here. I know that your wife Linda and your daughter Anna are here, so I uh, would like to really thank you for, for being here and I would like to thank you especially because I know you've been very helpful in the preparation of this of this ceremony as well as your other doctor Carrie that is unfortunately not with us today but I think we're uh, she's with us. Um, I I will do it in French once again, um, but I know that you know you're you're very much still attached to France and to the French uh, language. And uh, I've been told a little anecdote that oh. shows. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, there's nothing, you know. Uh, a little anecdote that shows that your attachment to France and the French culture and the French language is uh, is still very strong. Is that you decided that you'd rather be frequently confused for a woman, then change your name into John. <laughs> and I think that's the best proof that you could ever given to anyone that your, you know, that your French was for you something very, very strong. So, and I know that you, you, uh, your involvement in raising your daughters in, in to be good French women implied hours on the phone with Carrie, that I was also told, helping her improve French. So, thank you for all, for all this. I'll just remind briefly a bit of your history. Mm -hmm. We were born in Morocco, where you lived until 1955, and your family then settled in the United States when you arrived uh, at the age of nine years old. So, And your father, Frédéric Stern, was a successful art dealer and an ambassador of French art uh, with his gallery in Los Angeles, a gallery that was specialized in, in, in French art. So you were raised surrounded by fine art and with your brother Louis, who couldn't be with us tonight, but for a good reason, because he was attracted by another art in Chicago. So yes. that's also the proof of what I'm saying. Uh, and George, who is here tonight with his family, uh, you helped your father run the gallery from a very young age. And you often say that you have 60 years of experience in the world, in the art world, which is a long experience, but testify of your roots that are deeply, uh, deeply in the in the art world. So it's quite naturally, I think, that the three of you, the three brothers, uh, are now have dedicated their careers uh, to art in various ways. You started by being the scholar of the family since after studying art and history at the C California State University in San Diego and in UCLA, you became a teacher and an art historian. And in the early years of your career, uh, appeared 
one passion, and this passion is your passion for the landscape paintings of the late 19th and 20th centuries. Uh, and most of the greatest Californian plein air artists of that period were so little renowned then, but you became a specialist of them. And uh, you often, it's another anecdote, you often recount how you were able to purchase a painting by Edgar Payne for $400. That was the sign that you know that was not that known at that time, but you were the one who made them very famous now. And uh, I'm sure that such paintings were more likely to be found in antique or even furniture stores than in galleries. That was the case at the time, but yes. you changed it, and now you contributed hugely to the to their rehabilitation. Uh, in large part due to your tireless work to rehabilitate this this art of painting. In 1978, you became the director of the prestigious Peterson Galleries uh, and turned it into the first gallery to define itself as a dealer in Californian plein air art. Under your lead, the Peterson Galleries bought and restored paintings and then brought them to public recognition through exhibitions and the publications of catalogues that documented them. Public acknowledgement uh, followed and several galleries private collectors, scholars, starting to put here their emphasis on what you named Californian imp Impressionism, coining, com coining the term in 1982, and that is now renowned and universally appreciated as an art movement, so it's thanks to you. And uh, even though it still hasn't fully reached Texas, apparently, that I heard, but once again, I was told that maybe Texas is a bit far away, and... It's a but, different country. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that your daughter, Carrie, keeps an eye on landscape paintings in Austin's antique shop. Oh, yes. And uh, as you once did, and ask, you know, your opinion sometimes, finding your own forgotten piece of art. So it's a never-ending work of uh, researching and, and, and founding the, those paintings. As a foremost uh, specialist of this movement, you were called upon to become the executive director of the Irvine Museum, the development of which you have overseen since its inception in 1992. The Irvine Museum has since become a very powerful force to bring attention to Californian Impressionists, and it has benefited continually from your dedication as curator with renowned exhibitions, but also as an art historian. The museum uh, indeed publishes monographies and general works, some of which you wrote, such as California Light, a Century of Landscapes, painting by the uh, California Art Club. It also has a vast educational program, sending out books to school libraries and hosting school field trips. It's in the same spirit that the museum will soon move to its new location on the UCI campus closer than ever to education and to, and to students. And by this continued dedication uh, to your different roles as an art historian, as a curator, and as a, as a teacher, you keep turning people towards Californian Impressionism and underlining its specificity, and thus exposing its similarities and differences to, in, to its French roots. You promoted Franco-American artists such as Paul Delompré, as well as underlined the French component of the work of Guy Rose, for instance, and just to, name a, just to name a few. The way you typically start your lectures, uh, comparing two paintings by William Bougreau, your favorite painter ever, mm -hmm. and uh, Claude Monet, which is a very, very famous Claude Monet, to show the, this comparison to show the novelty of the Impressionism movement embodied by Monet is the perfect illustration of the tribute uh, you always pay to French art and its necessity to understand Californian painters, many of whom had studied in France. While underlining Californian's art specificity, you thus raise awareness of the influence of French art. In France, on the other hand, across the Atlantic, uh, Impressionism is considered as a movement specific to our country. We're a bit chauvinistic, so we tend to consider that Impressionism is, is, is French. And uh, being French yourself, uh, 
you know how touchy we can be, uh, and, uh, <laughs> and we're very careful not to use the term impressionism to name your traveling exhibition, Masters of Light, when it was presented in Paris and the Mona Bismarck Foundation, and I think it was very diplomatic on your part, and it was a very smart move. Uh, it was a remarkable success, and your ability to conduct conferences in French also contributed to reaching a broader uh, audience in, in France. So, thank you. Uh, thank you, because French ego had to be put aside to recognize the deep correspondence between French and American art history of this time. In general, the renown that Californian Impressionism has gained, vastly under your impulse, enhances the feeling of cultural and artistic proximity between the United States and France, your two countries, actually. So the passion for art that leads to such dedication is a passion for beauty, and first of all, the beauty of nature. A collector of plein air art, but also botanical art, you collect rocks and fossils, love dinosaurs, planets, and all unusual things, I might say. You have always been full of wonder for the beauty of nature, take, taking special trips with your family to gaze at the stars or see the petrified forest in Arizona. Uh, passionate about nature, uh, but also about history, and especially Roman history. You also found one of your favorite spots in France, in, in Provence, where your two interests can be met. Your passion for beauty is an active one, and it leads you to explore the world and see for yourself all the wonders nature has to offer, to collect beautiful things and knowledge, but also to share them. You recently donated your pre-Columbian art collection gathered when you were younger with the mother of your daughters to the Gilcrease Museum for all to enjoy. And when your daughters recall their childhood, they paint, they paint a picture of a man who always names and explains things, who shares knowledge and passion, and for whom transmission is an essential value. So, by displaying the work of arts you loved and the one you discovered and authoring or contributing to dozens of books and giving more than a dozen lectures a year, which a recognized sense of pedagogy, you go on sharing day after day. The same energy makes you a mentor for many contemporary artists whom you advise, encourage, recommend to art collectors, and sometimes even exhibit at the Irvine Museum. Your expertise and fairness are renowned and also make you a much thought after judge of landscape paint painting competitions. So, Californian Impressionism is the key word, I think, and you have rehabilitated, you have taken it out of the past, but you contribute also to making the plein air resurgence of today also known as Californian Impressionism that is still vibrant today and that is still very living today. This has, this has led you to receive several lifetime achievement awards from the plein air community in the recognition of, of, of this extraordinary involvement. And to conclude this little homage, I will maybe finish by one little thing, uh, saying that you describe art as having only one definition that makes sense, something that enriches your life. And I think it's a very good motto for all your career. And when we embrace it, I think it's a common point that that, uh, that can, comes out. Because through every aspect of your activity, uh, making it possible to display and appreciate past works as well as producing new ones, you allow more lives to be enriched by art. And for this, you should be warmly thanked, and I wanted to thank you very much today. So, I know you're uh, used to lifetime achievement uh, that you have received from many people, but I will now be very happy and very honored to bestow upon you the Medal of Chevalier des Arts et des Lettres. It's my honor. Yep.
Jean Stern, au nom du ministre de la Culture et en vertu des pouvoirs qui me sont conférés, je vous fais chevalier dans l'ordre des arts et des lettres. Bravo. Merci, monsieur. Bravo. Merci, je suis très fier. Thank you, everybody. This is a proud honor. Um, I am very delighted to be recognized by the country of my birth, France, and to be involved with the art in the country that I have adopted, the United States, and to keep both of them forefront in my thoughts at all times. So it is true, Consul, whenever I see one of the paintings of the California Impressionists, I immediately compare them and, and trace their heritage to the French Impressionists. So I am delighted to do this. This is something I've, I've been hoping for for a long, long time, and, and you made me very proud to be French and very happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.